Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at three new web browsers for 2025. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and it's been a while since we've looked at web browsers. We've been kind of obsessed with uh, 24H2 and Copilot and all that stuff, but um, the last few months have been kind of interesting. We've seen a lot of new web browsers all of a sudden, Um, and it has been a while, some time ago, probably a year and a half ago or so, we looked at, uh, broadly, at web browsers, you know, the most popular web browsers, some you might not have known about. Um, just as a quick recap, um, obviously Chrome is the most popular web browser by far, still kicking, still going girl strong, et cetera, but they did just drop support for a popular browser extension standard that is going to impact or already has impacted um, a lot of extensions, including those that protect privacy and security. So this is an interesting opportunity for people that are not happy about that to maybe look at other browsers, right? And so I recommended Brave uh, back at that time. I'm sure Brave is a great browser, but there's not much going on there since then. Brave, like some of these other companies, has been working on AI integration, on their search engine, et cetera, but kind of a minimal um, effort on user experience, I would say, in the browser. Um, Microsoft Edge, oddly, not a browser I would normally recommend, but they've made some big strides over the past year in performance, especially they're rewriting the user interface to no longer just use raw JavaScript. So it's dramatically faster now. Um, I have actually now been using Edge for several months against my better wisdom. And, you know, with the right extensions, strongly recommend things like uh, Privacy Badger, uh, Adblock, etc. cetera. Um, actually, it works pretty well. And it is incredibly fast. Um, so that's going pretty well. Um, Opera is a little bit of a mess in the sense that they have a lot going on, but Opera has that sidebar with apps. And that's an interesting thing. We're going to look at that a little more closely later because uh, sidebar apps, if you will, is kind of a, a, a growing feature in modern browsers now. And I find this to be particularly interesting. Um, DuckDuckGo has their web browser. They have their AI. They have their search engine, etc. They don't support extensions. I thought this might be the year that uh, DuckDuckGo is a browser, but right now it's kind of up in the air. Um, And I think we would have talked about Arc. I can't remember how long ago this was, Uh, but Arc uh, was at the time a new take on web browsers, Chromium-based sidebar workspaces, uh, kind of a command bar when you did Control-T instead of going to a new tab. Um, A lot of learning um, and people either fell in love with it immediately or ran screaming from it because it was too complicated. Um, They're going off in a different direction. So to kind of start this year's crop of new browsers off, I'd like to start with something that actually very closely resembles Arc. And this is called Zen. And so Zen is a browser that from a UI perspective is that thing I just described with Arc, which is you have this sidebar with workspaces. You can have multiple workspaces, color-coded, they can all have their own pinned and uh, different types of tabs and so forth. If I type control T, it brings up this kind of command bar. Now, if I go to a place like this Cover Your Tracks website, which you should all be using to make sure your browser is safe, it will in fact open in a new tab, but this is also a way to run commands, right? So we can do different things from here, uh, run different types of searches and so forth. So this is something that Arc did. In fact, it's kind of curious to me how closely this thing Uh, tracks to Arc in many ways, but there are differences. Um, Zen is open source. Zen is based on Mozilla Firefox and its Gecko engine, not on Chromium like most third-party browsers. That's interesting in its own right. Um, Mozilla has jumped off a bit of a cliff in some ways. There was a kerfuffle this year about their terms of service, which then, you know, they've done things that no a lot of their customers or users don't necessarily like. So if you wanted something that was like, is literally Firefox, but (laughs) <laughs> with uh, some huge improvements. Um, this is of interest maybe just for that reason. But because it's using Firefox and not Chromium, it has, uh, you know, if you go into settings, if you're familiar with Firefox, this will look similar. It uses the Firefox extensions. Oops, I went to the wrong place there. Um, instead of the, right, the Chromium or Chrome extension. So you, you can use those. But that means uBlock Origin still works. You don't have to worry about that extension technology I was talking about that still is still all there and they have this really deep um, 
set of customization capabilities through mods. And so there's a lot of community mods that uh, change this browser fairly dramatically. I don't have any installed here, but um, if you like to customize your browser, if you might have leaned into Opera maybe in the past for that type of thing, or uh, Vivaldi is like that as well, um, this is definitely something to look at. And if you are if you worry about monoculture in the browser world and so forth, not a big fan of Chromium or not a big fan of Google, um, this is this might be right up your alley. So this is this is kind of interesting. I will close you. And the second one is a light kind of um, minimalist version of Opera from Opera called Opera Air. Um, it's pretty. It, I like I like the UI, the UI quite a bit. It uh, supports different themes and different styles, different color schemes, and all that kind of stuff. This is I just happen to like green, so I've got this here. It's kind of this goofy little star page has all these little <laughs> wellness uh, links and so forth. You know, that's part of it. Uh, part of the integration here is that um, they have this kind of take a break functionality. So um, you can have it. You can actually set this thing up. So every so often, it will say, "Hey, maybe you should do some breathing exercises or meditation or whatever it might be." Um, you know, you've been sitting in front of the computer for eight hours. Maybe it's time to, you know, take a break, right? Um, I don't actually use it for that kind of thing. I appreciate it. I, I'm not against it. I think this might be smart for a lot of people. But the thing I like is just, I, I, I've grown to really like the way Opera works. And part of it is this sidebar. So it looks it looks different in this version of the browser because it's uh, kind of this minimalist idea. And, I, and I'm hiding the sidebar by default. But what you have over here are apps that run in the sidebar as opposed to tabs that run up here in the tab bar. So the distinction there is that these things can give you messages and notifications when something happens. So if it's an email app, you get a new email, it could be like, boop, hey, you got a new email, and then you can go look at it. Um, the way I do that is I actually, uh, I actually pin a tab, pin this one, this is not the one I would pin, but I, I pin email, calendar, and some other apps, things, social media apps, uh, to my browser uh, tab bar like this. And that's how I keep track of this. But of course that gets crowded. And of course those things take up memory and resources and, uh, you know, over time it slows down, et cetera. But these things don't sit there and run in memory. They just alert you when something happens. So messaging apps are a great example of something for this, um, Slack, uh, discord, um, I'm trying to think of all the services there and there that uh, that they've announced recently, but you know Facebook Messenger, like you can say here, WhatsApp. So these are they don't they don't have to sit here and take up resources, but because it's a back end service, when you do get a message or whatever notification, it can alert you. You can go to that thing, and you're not cluttering up your tabs, right? And so you can kind of draw that distinction between the two. So I think that's actually um, very interesting. Um, Opera has all the Opera stuff in it, right? So Opera does support things like the automatic. Uh, tracker blocking, ad blocking, et cetera, you still should install um, extensions for that. Frankly, it's not that good, but uh, you can use the Chrome extensions as Chromium based, et cetera. So um, it's basically everything you would expect from a web browser. It's got all the compatibility, performance, et cetera, of Chrome, Chromium, whatever. And then this kind of sidebar thing, um, which is actually pretty well developed and uh, is growing pretty fast. I think that stuff is, is very, very interesting. Close you. And the third one, this is one I just learned about, and I need to figure this one out a little bit better. This is this might be the Goldilocks one, if you will. Um, so this is a new browser, fairly new browser called Sidekick. Like most third-party browsers, it's based on Chromium, right? And so that's pluses and minuses, mostly pluses, but the pluses are that compatibility, the performance, it can work with the Chrome, it does in fact only work with the Chrome web store for extensions and themes. Um, by default, it has the the standard Google Chrome theme. It's light blue if you're using a uh, in light mode, etc. So you get all that stuff. But it also has that Opera feature with the sidebar, right? And so same same story here. So here you can actually see that I uh, I've pinned, I guess, an app. It's not a pinned tab like this thing here. It's a it's a pinned web app. In this case, Gmail and Google Calendar. And if I I can go to my calendar, of course, right. But when I get, when there is an event that occurs, it will give me a little pop-up. I can also open this in kind of a side-by-side -side thing. It supports side-by-side um, -side view, like a lot of modern uh, browsers do. So I can do this kind of thing. And this, the one that is a sidebar app will open in this kind of smaller window, which is kind of interesting. Um, the uniqueness here is that 
this browser supports multiple accounts for a lot of these types of apps. So if you have Slack, I know Google works this way, um, several others, you could right click this and you can add an account. So in this case, I actually have, I think of it as one Slack account, but it's technically two because I sign into a partner account and I could add that here. Um, in the case of Google, it works similarly, although you actually have to have a plus account. This is like a paid subscription to have two different Google accounts. But I do, in addition to polythrot.com, which is Google Workspace, I have uh, Throt at Gmail, which is just normal Gmail. So I, I can switch between them right from here. I can have them both there. Now, I mean, Google does support that here, right? You can see how I can move into that here. But when you do that, it's a different session. It's a different, uh, in this case, browser tab. So it's a lot more seamless to do it this way. So same benefits as with Opera and Opera Air, where you get the sidebar apps. So you can free up resources, free up UI space, et cetera. Um, but there's, <laughs> there's so much going on here. I, almost, I just don't, I don't have the time, nor do I actually have the experience yet to uh, explain all of it to, uh, to you quite yet. But as you add uh, different services to this sidebar, or if you have different tabs open here, when you do search from this browser, it actually searches across all of those data sets. And so we're almost getting into an AI-like AI -like bit of functionality here where you can search across uh, different services. I'm not gonna do that because those services have personal data in them or whatever, but this is actually kind of a cool bit of functionality. Um, there's a lot of uh, performance gain because they've cut out a lot of the Google integration from Chromium. Obviously they claim up to 3X, but um, you don't get the tracking and all this stuff. Um, this is the only browser that I've tested against um, Cover Your Tracks. Let's bring this up where this uh, looks at your browser and determines whether it has effective blocking against uh, trackers, They're tracking your uh, identity and location across the internet, but also uh, trackers that come in the form of ads, uh, in the form of images, which are really ads. And um, most browsers that I use, um, Brave is one exception, this is one too, um, do not have effective uh, blocking built in. This one does, right? So that's the first one I've seen since Brave, I think, that does that. That's pretty good. That's a good score. Um, there are sessions um, where you can uh, group tabs, like so, so tab grouping, split view. Like I said, there's a focus mode, so you can turn off all the notifications, the multi-account support. Like I said, um, if you liked collections in Microsoft Edge, this thing has collections. Um, it also has another proto AI feature called tasks, where you can set it up to do uh, multi-step uh, actions on your behalf and then come back and report to you and say, okay, we need you to take the next step or we, we've done the job, whatever it might be. So there's a lot going on here. Um, to me, this is the most interesting of these. Um, I really like the lightness and kind of minimalist effect of Opera Air. And I think Opera might get here with this kind of stuff. Um, but these guys are here as well. It's Chromium, which I like. It's super fast. And it's the type of thing where it's a browser, you could just use it, you don't have to worry about a lot of the detailed features, but if you are someone who wants to really uh, customize it or take advantage of these um, advanced features, this is a ton going on here. Um, so this is, I had not heard about this until about 24 hours before I recorded this. Um, I think I'm gonna learn a lot more about it um, as we go forward, but this is very, very interesting to me. So it's something to look forward to. So. This one again is called Sidekick. You can, uh, I guess, Google that or look it up online. Uh, Opera Air or Opera, but Opera Air to me is the nicer of those two. And then Zen Browser, if you uh, fans of Arc or fans of open source slash Mozilla, maybe a little disappointed uh, in the direction that company is taking and want something a little different. So um, I didn't know about any of these um, until pretty recently. Opera Air literally was just uh, released a few weeks ago as I record this, but. Um, these are all brand new for 2025, so something to consider if you like mixing it up or looking for something new and different. Um, I'm kind of surprised there's that much to say, but there's a lot going on there, so that's good stuff. Hopefully uh, you found this useful and interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash H-O-W. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you especially to our Club Twit members. We appreciate you and love you so much. If you're watching on YouTube and you're suffering through all the ads, do consider subscribing. You can learn more about Club Twit at twit.tv slash Club Twit. Thank you. See you next time.